I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Today, we're bringing back my good friend and the go-to man in dry land training expertise. Today, we got Chris Ritter, founder Surge Strength, which is leading and pioneering the way in dry land training. I mean, uh, the goal of Surge Strength, it, it, it's simple, and, it, and I love it. I, I, I like how Chris crystallizes what his company is about, build better athletes to generate faster swimmers. Who's not, who's not down for that. I'm down for that. Uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're listening to this conversation, press pause, go to surgestrength.com. That's surgestrength.com where you can learn about their dryland training programs, becoming dryland certified or enrolling in their free dryland one on, uh, their free dryland 101 courses. Let's get this going. Welcome back, buddy. Thanks, Mel. Yeah, we got a lot going on. <laughs> Good to get through all that introduction here. <laughs> uh, just, just a little insight. Uh, Chris and I talk quite a bit, but it's uh, we are we are talking to you today. We're recording today. This is going to go live um, later on, but we are talking to you today on the on the <laughs> at the start of Women's NC2A Championships. Uh, was it D one D three Championships? A lot's happening. For swimmers and coaches listening, you're probably just ending your short course season or you're close to it. We're somewhere within that range. That's in the next week or so, maybe a couple weeks, depending on, on where you're training. Chris comes to mind because, you know, I'm always thinking about him about this time because it's like, this is when you, you're you considering your season, your schedule, how you're going to train, what you're, what you're going to do next. Are you going to make dry land a priority? Um, is, is that something you think about, Chris? Yeah. And, and Mel, I've, I've been thinking about this in terms of approaching this, talking to a lot of coaches, the, the, sh the short course championship meets seem to be a much more scattered this year. Um, and I'm not sure what's really to attribute to that, but especially club coaches, it seemed to be much more scattered. And I, I landed on one word of confidence. And I think all the way back to when I was working with the eight and unders, or even, you know, working with the Olympians at the end of the day, it comes to what is running through your head when you step behind those blocks, the whistle blows, whether it's prelims, the finals, you need to have confidence in what you've done training wise up until that point. And that's a drastic spectrum in terms of what athletes can run up to the block. And some of them literally run up, right? I forgot my goggles, forgot my cap or something. And they're all in a hurry, but the confidence can be built on day one of the season. And I think dry land is such an important part of that. We talk about swimming being a, a quote unquote honest sport, you know, whatever work you're putting in, you're going to see coming out. But unfortunately, I think sometimes athletes cut themselves short. And I know as a coach, I was frustrated for them when they would do the hard work, when they would put in all the energy and effort, but for whatever reason, confidence just kind of disappeared around this time of year. And I can think of athletes off the top of my head of that. I coached and said, man, I knew they had better performances than in them than they were able to do. And I think a lot of times it comes back to confidence and just time over time, we've seen how much dry land can help with that because you're literally gaining confidence as you gain that extra pull-up, as you are able to do a little bit more on the bench press or back squat or whatever exercises you're doing. So I think of confidence and think about all the swimmers out there and the coaches that are probably nervous about how confident their athletes are at this point. You've had a lot of experience with elites, uh, Olympic gold medalists. And I, and I can tell you that the, you know, the best 24 month cycle of my career was if I, if I track it two years leading up to it, I started to gain strength. Um, uh, and over that 24 month cycle, uh, dry land and strength became a priority. I was the strongest I had ever been. And that's what, that's what produced, you know, American world records and Olympic gold medals. And it's, uh, it, 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 and anyone you talk to, and it, that, that's 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 out there training. You know, I think a lot a lot about master swimmers and, and their training, and their they they're going to dry land a whole lot more because of time. And it's like I, I got to get the most out of my workout. It's uh, well, and confidence too. I think that's actually like the essence of 
strength training, because when we put together workouts, or if you're doing a workout, you can kind of go one or two ways. You're either doing a, the same or a very similar workout over and over, and then watching yourself over time, like, oh, wow, this is easy. You know, this is getting easier. I'm getting better at this. Or you're increasing the intensity, the volume of the workout over time. And then you can look back and say, wow, you know, 10 months ago, I was only able to do half these weights or half this volume. And so I really think confidence is baked in if you do dryland training appropriately and, and how we talk about long-term development, progressive overload, things of that nature, making sure your technique is staying up with whatever intensity you're doing. But I really think it's baked into whatever you're doing in dryland, rep after rep that increases your confidence. And then a lot of people, that's what they take into the water with them. Because we know swimming can be sometimes so torturous. You're, the clock is always there, right? And if you're a little bit off, that can affect you sometimes for a few days or even weeks on end, depending on how you did in the water for a certain test set or something like that. Well, you've been at this over a decade. You've been providing online you know, re remote dry land training programs to swimmers, coaches, teams worldwide. Uh, what are some recent stories? You know, do you have do you have any 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 test any can you share testimonials? Anything that's uh, you know that's like, hey, confidence increased because they're dry land training, and this is the feedback I got. Yeah, no, Mel, I actually was thinking about how long we've been doing it because uh, recently or how recently, I forget off the top of my head, but BlackBerry, you know, was saying we're done with service, we're ending it. And back when we started doing online training, BlackBerry was the number one mobile phone. So that tells you like how long we've been doing this. You know, apps were still just a very birthing thing when we were starting this online training. At the time, we were just doing basically a private YouTube channel and, and PDFs. And we've changed over the course of the years, the systems we're using or the particular apps. But what hasn't changed is how we approach Dryland and building that confidence. And we're trying to put more podcasts out where we're talking to the coaches and the swimmers that we're working with on the Surge Strength Podcast. And one in particular we just recorded is going to be coming up uh, soon is with a young lady. She's a freshman, sophomore in high school. She's just approaching the one year anniversary of training with us. And so it was around this time last year, she completely flopped in the championship meet and was basically ready to quit swimming. The mom was really worried about, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how her mental health is going to be if she keeps in this sport and keeps getting results like that. So actually the parent came to us and like, hey, I'm not sure if my kid wants to stick with this. It's almost kind of like a long shot. Like, I, I hope this works. We'll see if this helps. A year later, Mel, she hit her futures cut that she had been chasing for years and she hadn't even fully tapered yet. And so we're, we're eagerly awaiting what the results are going to be here in the next few weeks for her. But now she is so excited about the sport. She's all in. She's like, I'm going to swim in college. I'm going for this. And you think about what a shift that is from a year ago. And especially as a parent, you know, not, not with a kid that old, but in some ways I can relate of thinking, God, you would do anything for your kid to help them maximize and think about all the good things that swimming is going to provide for her having a few more years in the sport versus flopping in a championship meet, not really investing in dryland, and then how much lost opportunity is there on the table. So that was really cool to talk about and to see young kids being able to get those goals that they've been chasing for so long. And also it goes back to, she put in a whole year of work. It wasn't like we're, we're promising some quick fix thing of, Hey, sign up with us. And four weeks later, you get whatever cut you're looking for. We know how it works. It is a long-term process. And it's not surprising to me either that a year later, she would get those results. A lot of time when I'm onboarding people, I say, look, a year from now, if, if you can't do any pull-ups, you're going to be at four or five, maybe even double digits because we've just seen it time and time again. And sometimes people think I'm just trying to sell them or, or they don't believe it, but we have just seen it. If you put in the work, if you stay consistent, our dryland certified coaches are there to help you along the way. And results like that are, are not getting old, but we are getting very used to those kind of results around surge strength here, working with the client. So it's always cool to hear stories like that. So look for that podcast coming out pretty soon on the surge strength podcast. That's an age group summer, but you also work with, you know, elites, Olympic champions, college swimmers and, and teams. I mentioned this earlier. I mentioned masters because I talked to masters athletes and it seems like, you know, they, they, they're always texting me during big competitions. I'm like, I'm busy, but they want to tell me about the gains they're making. And it seems like everybody that gets serious about, about their, you know, their, their career as a master swimmer, they always start leaning into dry land and uh, because of time, because they got to maximize their time and, and their training. 
Um, do you have any stories from Master Swimmers? Yeah, and actually it just aired today on our podcast <laughs> the day we're recording it here. But this goes back to talking about how long we've been doing this. This is Mel literally client number two or three, maybe even one or two. I have to look down and think about it. But this is, these guys have been with us from the start. Ernie and Bernie started training them in 2009. And they are just best buds, brothers from a different mother. It's just awesome to see their relationship through the years. And I've now seen their training for 13 years. Now, I haven't personally been doing the training at that time. We've had other coaches take on their training. But recently, Ernie celebrated his 72nd birthday by doing 72 pull-ups that day, Mel. Now it's not all in a row, but still that is like my hero. When I'm 72, I want to make sure I can do 72 pull-ups in a single day. And that was a much different conversation when we had both of them on. They talked about, look, the quality of life for us is so much better. And we notice it because our peers aren't doing this, right? And, And whether or not they're in swimming or not, their activity is just lower in general and they're not doing strength training. And so Ernie and Bernie, as they're aging, they see their friends aging much faster and kind of deteriorations in some parts of life. And so they're just so thankful that, man, I feel like this is helping us stay younger. It's helping us enjoy life. They, at one point, they sent us a picture of them working out on a cruise that they went on together, you know? So they're doing their their surge strength workout there in the gym while they're cruising wherever they are in the Caribbean. And so that's just cool for us to be able to see on the one end of the spectrum, we're helping young swimmers, you know, break through plateaus, keep their love of the sport alive. And then on the other end with the master swimmers, they're still enjoying life. They're able to go out and do the activities. And at the same time, Ernie talked about on the podcast, and I I can't remember the exact record, but it's a world record for the 90 year old swimmers. That's his goal. And I'm like, that's awesome. That's, that's like 10 plus years away. We are going to go for that. And that's just like a hero of mine to be thinking about when I'm that age, I want to be that cool. And to be able to do 72 pull-ups on my birthday and then say, I'm going after the 90 year old world record in masters. So that kind of stuff just inspires me. Um, I, I could, I could work with clients like that all day long. So it's just really cool to watch them on their journey. And again, not a quick fix. This is not, they came to us last month. They've been doing this 13 years with us and with Ernie's goals, they're planning on doing another 13 years with us as well. I want to be that guy. I want to be. I want to be that guy. I'm going. Like, I'm 80, but at, at, at 90, I want to be doing this. Um, you, you touched on something earlier. You, you, you know, you were talking about confidence, and you're talking about where we are in in terms of the season and the transition. You know, ending a season, going into a new season, and uh, you know, I, 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 I do want to skip over that. It's like you felt this as a coach. This is the time to create confidence. This is the time to make that plan. Um, you know, what, what are, what are coaches thinking right now? And, and, and what would, what would get them to move on this? Yeah. The line that Eddie Reese said, I can't remember if it was in a book or a speech or whatever, but he talked about, you know, when taper time comes coaches, it's all smiles on deck. And then you can go home when you shut your door, then you can cry, scream, whatever you need to do, get it out. Right. Like, but it is a stressful time for coaches this time of year too, maybe even on some levels more so than the athletes, because you can't control the outcome, right? At this point, you've put the hay in the barn and it's good luck swimmers, put them in the best position. And so In the Surge Strength Academy, we have this dry land mentorship where, among other resources, we do uh, monthly office hour calls with me. So coaches will put in their dry land questions, pop on Zoom, and we'll talk about it. And the past few calls, the past few months have really been, I felt, more just helping the coaches with their confidence, knowing what they're doing. They're they're bringing me these great workouts, you know, where they model after the Surge Strength approach. And in a lot of ways, I'm like, I'm not sure what else to tell you to do. This looks great. Like you've been following what we're doing, but I can sense that they need the confidence just as much as the athletes. Like they almost need, okay, I I got the seal of approval here, right? That we're good to go on this workout. It's not going to mess up my swimmers. And so I think coaches need to think about where are you getting your confidence, whether it's this time of year or just in dry land in general. And so that's been cool to watch the group grow of members that are in the mentorship there in the Surge Strength Academy and get on those monthly calls, talk to coaches, answer their questions about, you know, hey, what about this dry land workout? Or 
with one coach up in Alaska and she got certified uh, with us dryland certified about two years ago and has now been through a few seasons of it, but she had a double taper. And so we took about half an hour to really walk through with her kids, how to do dryland and they're from Alaska. So they're flying to some meet and I think it was Utah. And so then we have travel involved. And so we basically just took the whole time of figuring out, all right, what workouts are you doing leading up to the first taper meet? And then you got a week or two of buffer. How do we coordinate the workouts? What phases are we in? Whether it's strength, strength, power, power. So we talked through all that. And honestly, Mel, I don't think I changed that much, but I think what she gained from the call was that really that confidence that she was like, all right, this is the plan. Let's do it. And now that she has confidence, the athletes are going to have more confidence and that their meet for them is approaching in the next few weeks here. So I'm excited to hear back from her on how they did as well. Good dial, Ben. You know, <laughs> you're, you're working behind the scenes with, across so many different athletes, parents, coaches. Um, you know, you're, that's what I appreciate about, appreciate about you and the reason why I, I, I lean on you. Uh, you're a leader and pioneer, particularly with, with your, your surge strength um, dryland certification. How's that going? Yeah, we now uh, we're going on year entering year three of the certification and pretty soon now we're going to start counting in the thousands of coaches that are certified all around the world. And so it's just so cool to see, again, it goes back to that mentorship talk of the coaches go out, they get the certification, they do the work, they're going through all the modules and the videos, the templates that we give you. So that's the other thing too. If you've ever wondered how we train athletes going back to Ernie and Bernie over 13 year time frame where they're still getting results, when you become dryland certified with us, you basically get all the templates that we're using in-house with our clients. It's not like a, a separate pool. So when you go through that, you're getting all the resources that our dryland certified coaches use. So you can assess your athletes. You can understand, okay, what level of exercise do I need to have for them? How do I periodize them? How do I progress? How do I taper? We give you basically everything that we use internally, externally, when you sign up for the certification, it's cool to see coaches take that and then run with it. Now you're only able to enroll um, a few times a year, uh, which I think is interesting because it's like, Hey, <laughs> if you're going to do this, you got You got to sign up. And it's, uh, and, I, and I appreciate that, you know, that you've had to create windows of time where people can do this because frankly, it's been getting so big. Um, when's the next opportunity to become dry land, um, search drink dry land certified? Yeah. And I tried to do it, Mel, where I figured what are the, what are times in the season for coaches that they have a little bit of a breathing room? And so that's where we've kind of developed this cycle where there's usually an open enrollment sometime in the spring after the short course championship seasons. And then in the fall, just as the season is getting started. And I felt like in both those timeframes, that's when coaches are most kind of have room in their plate to dig into dryland and say, all right, what am I going to do? And really in the spring, I've seen not only coaches are planning for the long course, but in a lot of ways, they're even looking forward to the fall and saying, if I want to do this for the fall, I have to get budgets in order. I have to get all these other things. And so we've seen over the years that springtime is really the best time to set aside, dig in, get dryland certified. And then whether you're able to implement it over the long course season or not, at least you're ready to hit the ground running at the short course season in the fall. So yeah, our next open enrollment is starting Monday, April 4th, and it only runs a few days through Thursday day, April 7th. And so make sure you put that on your calendar. If you're on our email list, uh, you can also go to the website and on the certification page, there's a little box you can enter your email in. And that way you'll also be the first one to know when we open the doors. But yeah, I've seen that when coaches commit to this, right, that they actually put in the time and this is the good time of year to kind of carve out that time a little bit. It'd be the worst thing for us to open this a month ago, right? <laughs> in the middle of taper and all that. So we try to do the best we can to work with just the flow of the swim schedule. But yeah, April 4th is when next open enrollment to become surge strength, the dryland certified and join the hundreds of coaches around the world. Now, like I said, we're almost going to be counting in the thousands pretty soon. We'll see after this next open enrollment. I feel a lot for coaches because you're, you know, even in the best circumstances where you got staff and support and admin, which is frankly, not most of the market, not most of the, the swimming family in our community, it's uh, coaches have to prioritize things and they can be so exhausted. And, you know, it's all, it is all, you know, we are our habits. It is 
that prioritization of the right things that makes the difference. And, and, um, and Mel, on one point on that, another story just came to mind of a, of a swimmer. We haven't done a podcast on this one per se, but we've gotten feedback from the dryland coach I actually just sent it to me the other day where um, their coach, the dryland is almost non-existent. And that's one of the reasons the swimmer came to us is they're not doing dryland. And the swimmer came to us. The team just went through their taper meet. The, all the swimmers on the team, except for the one swimmer that came to us at a time across the board in every single event the, she was the lone swimmer that had proved time. Like you, you can't tell me dryland wasn't the difference there, right? That they sought us out and they said, Hey, we know our coach or the program for whatever reason that doesn't have the dryland program that we know we need as a parent trying to help your kid out. And she was, she didn't have the greatest meet, but she still improved. She got PRs. And that was the big thing, especially when comparison to her teammates that weren't doing drowning with us. I'm not sure what other factors you could look for in something like that. And so don't put yourself in that situation to be that coach, right? Where you put in all this work, the athletes are putting in all the work, then we get to championship and it's just flat or disappointing. So make sure you carve out some time this spring to look at your dry land, reassess it, whether or not you want to take the step and become certified, or maybe you want us to do a program for your team. I really just encourage you don't be that coach. <laughs> it's yeah. Dry land expertise equals better performances in the pool, faster performances in the pool, prioritize it. This is, this is the, this is the difference between average and good, good and great, great and making history. Um, where should people go if they're interested in surge strength offers? Yeah. So surgestrength.com is the hub. And from there, I would say you think about as a coach, do you want us to write the program for you? So that'd be signing up to get started with a surge strength program, or do you want to write the program and by becoming surge strength rally and certified, then you can take it off. Now we even have some coaches that do both because then they are understanding why we're doing what we're doing. And a couple of coaches have done that over the years and almost transitioned from using us, leaning on us a lot to then getting certified, kind of understanding it. And then they've taken off and they've just run the program by themselves. And that's awesome. We think that's a win for us, even though they're no longer training with us. The fact that we've educated them enough that they can go out and be confident enough to run their dryland program. We see that as a win. Now, if you're a parent listening to this or swimmer, we have programs for you. And for swimmers, parents, and coaches, we have the free dryland one-on-one courses. I'd say if you're unsure, that's the best place to start because, hey, it's free. You're going to get a little bit of a sense of how we approach dryland. We even throw in some different assessments that you can do right there in the free course to kind of see where you're at. But yeah, surgestrength.com. And then again, check out the podcast and the YouTube channel as well. Enrollment days. Give me, give me those dates one more time. Yeah. April 4th is when open enrollment will begin through midnight Thursday, April 7th. We will not let you join on that Friday. So do not email me. Do not even ask. Those are the days. Get it on the calendar now. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. That's why that's I, w- I wanted to have on because I'm my phone's going to start blowing up and I'm going to get way too many emails. So we just want to communicate clearly. But uh, I, I appreciate you taking the time. If you're out there, go to surgestrengthdryland.com to learn more about dryland program certification and the dryland 101 courses. You know, this is the one thing that you can do. This is that, you know, if, if, if you flatlined in the pool and you're stale with your practice and you're like, I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing anymore because that's something that all athletes and coaches and parents, they start questioning themselves. This is that thing that you can do to make the difference. Surgestrength.com. Thanks, Mel. You've been listening to the Swim Swam Podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.